Hello, it's Denise from the University of Sewing, and we're gonna go back to Granny's 1930 sampler pattern that we're working on. This time, guys, we're working on block number 30. Yay, I feel like that's a milestone, right? 42 is our goal, so we're getting there slowly but surely. If you're new, awful glad you're joining us. We put out these videos every two weeks with a new block. We offer tips and tricks, what works, what doesn't work. Um, usually the what doesn't work things are the things that I tried and went, yeah, don't do that. So I share those with you to save you the hassle of doing those. And I have some good tips for you today. So let's talk about our block today. Number 30 is this really sweet little block called Honeybee. And if you look at Honeybee, the background and the yellow squares are pieced. Very easy, very simple, traditional piecing. And then the bodies, the yellow and the gold of the bee are applique. I know for some of you, applique is a dirty word. I know, I know. And I have to say, I wasn't super thrilled to do the applique. And when I did the practice one, I was less thrilled. However, I found some tips that I'm gonna share with you that made block number two come out so much nicer. I'm gonna lay this one down on the table next to the practice one so Dave can show you some of the differences in what I discovered. And again, the reason I share these is so that you guys don't have these issues. If you look at, I'm gonna get my little stiletto here, but if you look at the gold wings on the blue and yellow block, they're supposed to be nice curve shaped pieces, kind of a leafy almost look, but they get kind of pointy here and here. And part of that was my pressing. And then when I got the pressing figured out, I decided that part of it also was the way I was actually stitching that. So I've got some tips for you on both. Let's look at what kind of things you're gonna need to do this block and to have some success with this block today. You're obviously gonna need your pattern book by our buddy Ricky Timms. We do have a few in the shop every now and then we run out. Thank you for that. If you don't have yours, I'd say check out the online website, uh, universityofsewing.com. We're happy to ship it to you. If you're local, we'd love to see you. It's a fun little book. Um, even if you don't want to do the whole thing, if there's just a couple blocks that you're really excited about or you want to try, this is a great way to try it. The book actually goes along with this really sweet little novel, The Lizzie Albright and the Attic Window, which is a combination Ricky Timms and Cat Bowser story. Very sweet. So that's not a must have, but you know, in these snowy winter days, you need something fun to read. This is a great one. But what do you need to have to do this block? Other than the pattern book, you're going to want probably some heat resistant template plastic. This is what our book and our pattern recommend. And we are gonna make templates for those B parts, the body and the wings. You're gonna need a good ruler. I put some washi tape on mine to mark because some of the measurements were like two and five eighths or something. So just to keep my eyeballs and my brain a little happier, I just put a little piece of washi tape on there. You might also want to use some glue for this project. We've got a couple options for you. We've got a glue stick, which is great. We've got this little bitty dab, which is nice. And then we do also have this larger bottle and I'm gonna tilt this up maybe so you can see it's got the little dropper in it. And that will definitely get the, uh, the glue where you want it and not where you don't want it, which can be a problem. We're gonna do some pressing on these tiny little pieces. And so you might also wanna consider some of these little silicone thimbles. They're heat resistant. If you're prone to um, scorching your fingers, that's no fun. That takes all the fun out of sewing. Don't do that. These will help. It's a set of three. So there's bound to be a size in there that will fit to your fingers. And then I've got a trick for you using some starch. And we do have Mary Ellen's Best Press here in the shop. It's a pretty nice one. It doesn't have, um, this one is scent free, which I like very much. It's kind of a light starch, but it really works for the little tip and trick that I'm going to show you. Um, the other thing that you're gonna want, and I did show this, but let's go back to this, is a stiletto. And this is a new addition to my personal sewing studio, but boy, has it come in handy. And I'm gonna show you where we wanna use that to keep our fingers out of the way, but make sure our block is where we want it to be. So we've got our heat resistant templates cut out. 
And how did we do those? How did we get them so nice and straight? Well, first we printed off a page out of our book. And then I think the easiest thing is just to lay your template plastic on it, use your fine point Sharpie marker, and trace around it nice and slowly. You do want to get a good trace, so you want this curve to be nice and smooth. And then when you're cutting it out with your um, chunky paper scissors, don't use your good scissors on the plastic, you also want it nice and smooth. So take your time with that part and don't rush it. Another option, and I tried both, and they both work equally as well, is to use a little bit of freezer paper. This is actually two sheets of freezer paper fused together. And it works the same way as the template plastic. And I will say the first one that I did, the blue and the yellow one, I really fought with getting the templates the right shape to get those curves nice and smooth. And my poor heat resistant template plastic began to warp and bend. That's how much I was pressing it. When I went to the tip that I'm going to share with you, I didn't have to press quite so much. And I was very, very glad, much happier with the second version. So here's what we're, here's our goal. That's what those guys are gonna look like on the back. So you're going to take your template, put it on your fabric, trace around and leave enough room, even if you're using scraps, leave enough room because you're gonna trim a little bit of, I won't even call it a seam allowance, but it's that fold over allowance. So you need to have this, and it's actually a little less than a quarter of an inch. Don't worry about it being exact. Don't fight with it for that. So trim this, trace this rather, then trim, then you're gonna have to press. And to do that, let me get my little scissors here. I'm gonna show you our tip and our trick. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this guy real quick. And on these curves, we are going to put some clips in the curve to make it lay a little better. And we're just going to go all the way around. We talk a lot about using um, practice blocks. Even if you don't do a whole practice block on this one, practice with this applique part. The block itself, the background is super easy and will go together very quickly. The applique part could be time consuming. The first time I did it, the practice one, it was so much more time consuming than it should have been just because I was fighting with it. So let's trim that off. That looks pretty good, kind of a scant quarter inch there. Now we're gonna add some clips, some snips, and I'm going not quite up to that line, but just a couple threads in front of it. And the idea here is that it's gonna make those curves turn and fold and lay flat, hopefully better than if we just tried to manhandle them and coerce them into place. And you don't need a whole lot. Of course, if you have a shape that's got a straight line, you don't need to do the straight line. And even down here, we're not gonna clip anything here. We might have a little excess at the end that we trim off, but we're not gonna clip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the ironing and I'm gonna show you my tip, which I have to say is not my tip. I found it online and I love it. So I'm gonna share it with you. Dave's gonna come around to the other side. There is a uh, popular quilter. I think her company is Fig Tree Quilts, Joanna Figueroa. This is her technique, but I love it. It's fantastic. I've got my Best press, my starch, and I borrowed, haha, ha, a tiny little paintbrush from the children. I've got just a lid, literally just a lid. I've poured some of the starch in here. I'm dipping my paintbrush in, and now I'm just going to paint in this fold over. I hate to say seam allowance because it's not really. And you can see it changes color a little bit as it gets wet. If you get it on your paper, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. Certainly, if you get it on your template plastic, it's not going to hurt anything. If you soak your paper, it's going to curl, and then it's going to misbehave on you. So do be a little careful with it. But it's just starch. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, we get to fold and press. And I'm going to start with my fingers. 
watching Joanna's video, she had a really good point. If you're doing a lot of applique, you might want to uh, look at getting a small iron. There's a couple different versions out. If it's just something you do every now and then, you can completely do this with your regular iron. I have a little tiny iron here that I'm gonna show you today. And I will say this is one that at the moment we don't have any in the shop, but if it's something you're interested in, you can certainly let us know and we can get that for you. And my iron is nice and hot, but look how it stays. And then I can just coax it over. And all the way around. And it works so much better than me trying to fight with it. Now I'm not going to go all the way around the curve. We'll do the top just so you can kind of see. And if there's a little pleat, it's okay. It's going to be underneath. Nobody's going to know but you. It's not a problem. The idea is to get that curve nice and smooth. And I'm not sure if having nice long fingernails would be useful here or not. We'll go ahead and go all the way down just to show you. And then at the end, that curve that goes out, we're just going to fold this guy right over the edge. Give him a little press there. I'm going to go back up here to the top. This one doesn't want to behave. Now then, let's flip him over. Not bad. We've got a little point here that we could play with. But you see this little piece down here sticking out? I would just take my scissors and trim that off carefully because it's going to be underneath. As for this one, if I really didn't like the way that was coming out, I could just add some more starch and do it again. The starch makes it really forgiving. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Now that we know how to get a pretty good shape with this applique, a nice, fairly smooth curve, do a couple of them. You'll get a little better each time, I promise. Let's talk about how to attach this to our block. This is a little different. For those of you that are new to applique, um, I won't say I'm new to it. I haven't done a lot, but the more I do it, the more I like it. So we've got this guy and we've got my one lonely little green bee here. And the pattern does suggest that you don't take it all the way into the corner, but just a couple threads out of it. So what I've done is I've centered all the points into the corner I'm gonna turn it this way. And then this side, I'm gonna to try to get them all kind of angled, <clears throat> excuse me, the same way. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the back just to hold it in place, because it's so tiny, I don't really wanna pin. I'm not gonna be stitching over the glue, so I'm not worried about that. And notice I just did here, I didn't do the outside. You could do the outside if you wanted to, that particular glue stick would not be the best choice for that. But that one with the little dropper would be really useful, I think. I'll give this a little press. All right, now let's go over to our machine. Today we are playing with the Bernina 790 Plus. We've got our 9mm stitch plate on because we are going to be doing a blanket stitch. So in our stitch list here I've gone to the quilting stitches and in this particular machine it's number 1329. Now I'm gonna go back out here. To start the default on this stitch is 2.6. It's kind of big. I decided I liked it a little lower at 2.3 and then when we get to those really pointy ends we're gonna lower it down to about two. And I mentioned that, you know, part of the problem with getting the smooth curve was the pressing, which we, we've improved on that. We, we can still always improve a little bit more, but we've improved on that. But also the stitching, if you don't make enough small turns, it's gonna look very, not jagged, but it, it's gonna look boxy. 
And so the more little turns that you do, the smoother that curve is gonna look even in the stitching. So this is definitely not a quick process. Um, my suggestion is get the background blocks sewn together first, and then, you know, maybe do the bodies one day, do the wings another day, and just kind of space it out. What foot do we have on today? Well, we need an applique foot. So we could either be using our 20C, or of course our 20D, if you have dual feed, which is always fun. And the one that I've actually got on the 790 today is the 34D, which is very similar to the 20, but it's clear. And I think you can tell in the video, the opening on it isn't quite as large, but because it's clear, it's not really a problem. It's actually gonna hold those pieces in place really well, but I'm still gonna be able to see where those points are to make nice turns. So let's put this last little piece on. We've got our thread in, we've got, I've matched my top and bottom thread to my applique piece, not to this piece. Now the tricky part here, I'm gonna lower my presser foot with my knee lift. And I will say for me, the knee lift, I, I don't know that I could do this without the knee lift. I'm gonna lower my needle almost down but I wanna make sure that that needle is going just to the outside of that applique piece. And so I'm gonna lift and move it just a little bit. That looks pretty good. We've got the machine also set at needle down, which is useful. And we're gonna start just a couple stitches here. Now I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna stop there because I wanna pivot a little. But my suggestion here, make sure that your needle is on the outside of your applique piece before you pivot. So we're gonna turn just a little and keep going. And you can get two or three stitches before you have to turn again. And that's where the needle down is really important. And for me, the knee lift is really important because I don't have to let go of my project. If you've never used your knee lift, now's the time to dust it off and give it a try. It really is like having a third hand. And I think Bernina says that using the knee lift will save you about 30% sewing time. We're gonna go maybe one more here. And now we're gonna stop here and I'm gonna adjust that stitch length down to two because I'm getting close to that point. And we're gonna go all the way to the end. And one more. Stopping there, now I'm gonna pivot. And keeping that needle on the outside of my applique, on the outside of the green. And pivot again and keep going. And we're just gonna do a couple stitches with that smaller stitch length. And now I'm gonna stop and go back up to that 2.3. And so you can see why this particular block is a little time consuming. This is not something you want to rush. But sometimes that's half the fun, you know, slow down. And we'll pivot a little here. Go ahead and finish this guy off. And turn him here a little bit. Turn back this way. That clear foot is really very nice. I'm curious how many of you love applique? How many of you are afraid of applique? And then I'm also curious, does that opinion change? after you play with this block a little bit. I'd love to know in the comments. And speaking of comments, if you haven't had a chance to like our videos, I would encourage you to do that. That helps people to find them. and also lets us know that we're on the right track doing something that you're enjoying. And be sure to subscribe and share with your sewing buddies. This is the kind of project that would be fun to do with a group, I think. Pivot one more time this way. And now 
this way. The next block that we're gonna do, block number 31, is called Moon Over the Mountain. And it's also applique, but it's not tiny little pieces. So it'll go much faster. But, oh, speaking of tiny, I forgot to bump back up to 2.3 again, but that's okay. But, so this is a good one to practice that applique technique. We'll go one more. And then next week we'll get to play with it again, or next time rather. I think Margaret has some uh, tips and tricks for us. She said that was one of her favorite blocks. Let's put this guy back over here on the table and trim some threads. And what do you think? I think it's coming out kind of cute. I don't know that I would do an entire quilt of this block this size. Maybe something a little bigger uh, as far as block size and then maybe more like a wall hanging or, you know, a little throw kind of thing might be doable. I don't know about you guys, but I like applique a little more after doing this one, especially using that starch tip. If you have other tips or tricks that you think um, work really well on this particular type of block, please be sure to share them. You could even email them to us at info at universityofsewing.com and then we can pass them on to others also. I hope you guys have enjoyed block number 30, the honeybee. Come back next time as we do 31, moon over the mountain. I'm Denise. For everybody at the University of Sewing, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.